All right, welcome to our scene on Chlamydia, where we see this gigantic clam over here. This gigantic clam is going to remind us that this scene is about Chlamydia. Now, in this scene specifically, we're going to talk about Chlamydia in general. In the next scene, we're going to talk about Chlamydia pneumonia, and in the scene after that, we're going to talk about Chlamydia trachomatis. So let's begin. So you may have noticed this interesting guy in the middle of the clam over here. Let's take a look at him. Perhaps this guy is in charge of the clam. This guy, you may notice, is stuck inside the clam, which reminds us that chlamydia is non-motile. It doesn't move. He also likes to keep his oxygen mask around, and that's because he relies on oxygen, which reminds us that chlamydia is an obligate aerobe. It requires oxygen for growth. Now, this is interesting. He's saying, er, I kind of need you. I guess he says this to random people who walk by. Kind of weird, I know. Let's focus on I kind of need you. This reminds us that chlamydia relies on a host for survival, and that's because it doesn't produce its own ATP. Now let's get to the letters ER. ER reminds us of the two forms of chlamydia, E for elementary bodies and R for reticulate bodies. The elementary body is the small spore-looking type, and it's the infective form of the bacteria. So what happens is the elementary body enters the host cell and gets enclosed in a vacuole called an inclusion. Here it becomes the reticulate body, R for reticulate body. The reticulate body can use the host cell resources to divide, and it does so by binary fission. Now eventually the binary fission results in a huge number of reticulate bodies which then start transitioning back to elementary bodies. And this causes the cell to burst open, letting out lots of elementary bodies into the surrounding fluids, which then attach to other cells to repeat the cycle over and over again. Which is why you may have noticed that there is this recycle sign over here on this bubble, which reminds us that this cycle repeats itself again and again. Now let's take a look at the top of the clam over here. We see that this guy wrote some clam rules. He has rules. The first is that there are no mermaids. Mermaids are not allowed on this clam. This reminds us that chlamydia has a reduced amount of muramic acid. And it is for this reason that it lacks the classic peptidoglycan wall, which is why we wrote over here, no walls. And as you can see for yourself, this clam, of course, has no walls. Again, this is all to remind us that chlamydia does not have a classic cell wall, which is why gram stain is not used to visualize it. Well, what is used to visualize it? Let's take a look over here. Here we notice the gems. The gems remind us of the GM sustain. And in fact, we see the GM sustain of chlamydia on this board that is supporting the gems. GM sustain is used to visualize chlamydia. And as we can see, they are reddish blue. Next to the gems, we see this fluorescent antibody, which reminds us of the fluorescent antibody stained smear, which may also be used to visualize chlamydia. All right, now let's get to treatment for chlamydia. In the clam over here, we see the random AZ mice. You see one has an A on him and one has a Z on him. These are the AZ mice. AZ mice for azithromycin. Azithromycin is the preferred treatment for chlamydia, and that's because it's a one-time treatment. Alternatively, doxycycline can be used. And how are we going to remember that? Well, let's take a look behind these mice over here. There's a random picture of a doctor on a cycle. We'll call it the doctor cycling. Doctor cycling for doxycycline. Doxycycline may also be used to treat chlamydia. In the next scene, we'll talk about chlamydia pneumonia, and in the scene after that, chlamydia trachomatis. Alright, welcome to our scene on chlamydia pneumonia. And that's represented by this gnome over here. This gnome over here that is walking reminds us of walking pneumonia. Chlamydia can cause walking pneumonia, also known as atypical pneumonia. Now, this is actually a more mild form of pneumonia. And if we take a look behind this gnome over here, he didn't come off of a ship, he came off of a bed, which reminds us of the fatigue associated with the walking pneumonia, and the thermometer reminds us of the fever. Other nonspecific symptoms of chlamydia pneumonia may include sore throat and a dry hack and cough. And because these symptoms are atypical of bacteria, walking pneumonia is also known as atypical pneumonia. Alright, this is our scene on Chlamydia trachomatis. In a previous scene, we spoke about Chlamydia overview, and that was represented by the clam over here. We spoke about different features of Chlamydia. Then we spoke about walking pneumonia, represented by the walking gnome over here, as Chlamydia pneumonia causes walking pneumonia. And now we're going to talk about trachomatis, represented by the truck over here. The truck is going to remind us of Chlamydia trachomatis. So let's begin. Here we have this truck over here, near the clam, crashing into this home over here. On this random island over here, there's this interesting looking home. 
let's take a look at this home over here and the members of it. On the first floor, we see A, B, C. On the second floor, we see D through K. And on the third floor, we see L1 through L3. This home is going to remind us of the three different categories of serotypes of Chlamydia trachomatis. So here we have ABC. They're running away. I guess they're scared by the fact that a truck just hit their home. Now as you can see over here, they can't see where they're running. And that's because they're blind. This reminds us that serotypes A through C cause chlamydia conjunctivitis, or trachoma, in adults. This can progress, if untreated, to keratoconjunctivitis, a condition in which both the conjunctiva and the cornea are infected. This could actually result in total blindness if the cornea gets destroyed. Now let's take a look at the second category of serotypes. Here we see D through K. Serotypes D through K is another category of serotypes. And as we see, these D through K members of the family have sexually transmitted infections. Chlamydia trachomatis serotypes D through K are the most commonly sexually transmitted infections in both men and women. In men, it commonly infects the urethral mucosa causing inflammation, known as urethritis. It can actually spread to the prostate causing prostatitis. In women, there can also be a urethritis. But the infection is more famous for affecting the lower genital tract, causing vulvovaginitis, where the vulva and the vagina are affected. The cervix may also be involved, leading to cervicitis. From the cervix, the infection can go up to the uterus, the fallopian tubes, and the ovaries, causing pelvic inflammatory disease, or PID. The infection can complicate into a Fitz-Hugh-Curtis syndrome, which is when the inflammation spreads to the peritoneum. We take a look at the letter I, and we see that there is this dot on top of the I. This is not actually a dot, this is an egg. It's an egg top. Egg top for ectopic, ectopic pregnancy, as these serotypes are associated with ectopic pregnancy. Behind this mother over here, actually, we see the baby. I just put the baby over here to remind us of neonatal conjunctivitis. That is, if chlamydia affects a pregnant female, there is a risk of the infection to be passed to the baby during vaginal delivery, leading to neonatal conjunctivitis. And for conjunctivitis, we can imagine a little fire by this baby's eye. Okay, finally, we're up to serotypes L1 through L3. Serotypes L1 through L3 cause lymphogranuloma venerum, and that makes sense. The Ls cause the L condition. This condition is also known as LVG. This condition most commonly affects the inguinal lymph nodes. Well, let's take a look over here. We see that they are both smiling and frowning. This reminds us that lymphogranuloma venereum begins with small painless ulcers on the genitals. We see these painless ulcers on the genitals over here, but eventually forms into swollen, painful inguinal lymph nodes that ulcerate, known as buboes. So the frowning face reminds us that eventually it becomes painful. This condition, by the way, is treated with doxycycline. So there we have it, the three different categories of serotypes of Chlamydia trachomatis. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this scene on Chlamydia. Take care.